Hi, church. We'd like to thank you for your support, patience, and prayers through the search process for a new lead pastor. If you weren't at church on Sunday to hear our announcement, we're very pleased to announce that the board will bring a motion to the membership at a members meeting on Monday, January 23rd for Jeremy Light to be our new lead pastor. We'd like to take you through the process we've been through and how we landed on this decision. This search was built on the previous committee's work. Our first step was to engage a group to pray for the process. We are so thankful for their commitment to praying as we worked and trusted our loving God to bring wisdom and clarity as we moved along. We began in September by reviewing the job description. The previous job description was built on an extensive review of our church. We didn't see a need to rewrite entirely, rather to put a greater emphasis on pastoral shepherding and collaborative leadership. Both our congregation and staff need shepherding, and the biblical emphasis on shepherding is great. Once we finalized the job description, we posted the position. Our distribution included 24 platforms, including seminaries, Bible schools, and recruitment organizations. Our church is well known, so word spread through the church and denomination networks. As we received applications, Preston assisted us in vetting them. Preston's years of experience leading a church and staff allowed us to set our expectations of the process. In November, we gathered a group of church members and board members to form a subcommittee. Melissa DeBoer, Mark Shipton, Dave Acri, Melissa Gartley, Linda Stromsmo, Grant Walker, and myself. This group afforded us representation from a wider demographic and a depth of HR and local church experience. The group went through the vetted list and finalized a shortlist. We then went through a two-step interview process. The first interviews were to see if the applicants would fit the culture of our church. Questions were geared to hear their understanding of our church doctrine, culture, and style of leadership. After this process, we began an extensive conversation with references. We went beyond the listed names and contacted past and current co-workers, past and current supervisors, and congregants the applicant had led. The second set of questions dug much deeper. This interview was intended to see if the applicant could do the job itself. These questions focused on the role, the responsibilities, and the expectations for a lead pastor at eFree Lethbridge. After those steps, it was abundantly clear to us that we had a candidate who possessed the qualities and character that we were looking for, and the committee and board were unanimous in their selection of Jeremy Light. We are excited to recommend him to the congregation Jeremy isn't new to this church, but this role will be new and different for him. We were deeply impressed and encouraged by his heart for our community and his hopes for our church. We'd like for you to get to know Jeremy and his vision for our church a little more. Hi, I'm Jeremy. I'm Christine. Feels like lots of you know us pretty well already, but the reality is that many of you just know me from my public ministry, which is a reflection of who I am, but not all of who I am. And I don't think many of you know Christine very well at all. So I hope this video and the Q&A sessions that come up in the next week will help you to get to know us more fully. So we thought we would just take this opportunity to give you a quick sketch of our biography and then share a couple of things about us that we think you may not know already. So I grew up in Saskatchewan, in southern Saskatchewan, around the Regina and Moose Jaw area, mostly in small towns, except I went to high school in Regina at Campbell Collegiate. I grew up in the exclusive Brethren Assembly, uh, a group of people who really relied on and, and valued scripture, and so I have that as part of my heritage. I don't have a clear recollection of exactly when I prayed to receive Jesus. I would say my spiritual formation is more of a journey than a point in time. However, I do have kind of a fuzzy memory of kneeling in some red shag carpet in Regina Beach in our home when I was about four years old to pray to receive Jesus as my savior. After high school, I went to Briarcrest Bible College where I got my BA in business administration, uh, emphasizing accounting. And then I worked at SABC for a year 
worked at Picture Butte Evangelical Free Church, now called Cornerstone, as a youth pastor there for about two years, and ended up at the E-Free Church of Lethbridge as a youth pastor in the high school ministry. And I grew up in Calgary. Um, I have one sibling that I grew up in, and um, I received uh, Jesus as my Savior at a young age, and I do have a recollection of it. When I was young, actually, um, so younger than grade two, I remember my mom would take my brother and I to Mass. Um, I've always believed in Jesus. I've always believed in God and had, had faith, and I think that's carried through in my life. Um, through different seasons, but I remember going to a birthday party and um, the mom of my friend um, always was, was a walking evangelist. She would always have tracts in her purse. So we'd go to the bank with her and she would give a tract to the bank teller. Um, and at this birthday party, I remember we just finished a game and Janet came in to the living room and said, if anybody wants to meet Jesus, you just come into the kitchen now and sit around the table. And I did, and so I went into the kitchen and she had little cartoon tracts um, around the table and um, she, ex she, she showed us Jesus, she shared Jesus with us and I remember that moment as being the moment I accepted Jesus as my savior. Um, growing up, I always, I tried going in and out of youth group, I tried, I tried church, I just had a really hard journey um, with church um, and building relationship there. Um, after high school, I attended Thetis Island uh, Bible College, Cape Henry Torchbearers Bible College for two years, um, and then found myself in Lethbridge, attending the University of Lethbridge. Which is where we met. And I always thought we met at Southern Alberta Bible Camp while we were counseling there. But we didn't. We met at a college and career event at somebody's house. I remember the first time Christine told the story of how we met, and I was so confused until all of a sudden it dawned on me, and I had the realization, you were that person? That was you? <laughs> Which is ironic. Yeah. Then you chose me. Yeah, so that's right. <laughs> yeah. So we've been married for 21 years now, and we have two kids. Zach is 15, and Lizzie is 11. So that's kind of the biographical sketch, but that doesn't really tell you who we are. It's part of who we are. But Christine, what's something that you think people should know about you that they may not know already? Or know about me? Know about you. We're yeah. starting with you. Yeah. We're starting with you. Um, well, this is ironic that he put it to me instead of him, because one thing I would say is you actually don't love being the center of attention. Yeah, that's true. I remember when our volunteer youth staff bought us a TV as a gift for us, and they were presenting it as part of the sequence that we call Dreamweaver, where we granted wishes mm -hmm. to certain kids in, the, in our youth, um, youth yeah. ministry. And uh, I didn't there was no Dreamweaver scheduled, but Dreamweaver was present that day. I was so confused. And then they called me up and all of a sudden uh, I was like in the spotlight. I didn't know how to respond. I responded so poorly. I seemed so ungrateful. And thankfully you came along and mm -hmm. fixed everything, which was great because I don't know what to do when I'm the center of attention. So this process will be really fun. And I have to say you did, you did well in the end. You made a thank you video. Yeah. So. You did that in the end. I fixed it. Yeah. <laughs> but I think the flip side of you not liking to be the center of attention is you you do really well shining the spotlight on others and you, you like to um, empower others to shine themselves. Yeah, that's also true. One of my greatest joys is when God uses me to help someone discover their true identity in God's family and their place in Jesus' mission. And my best days are when I come home and I've had the opportunity to invest in somebody's ministry or in their discipleship and when they suddenly understand more fully God's grace for them or they take that step of faith that's a little bit mm -hmm. scary but they're equipped to do that because of some time they spent with me and Christine can usually tell when I've had a day like that because I come home absolutely wired. Yeah, that's true. So what's something you think people should know about me? Uh, I think people should know that Christine is a strong, capable leader. Thank you. <laughs> um, I do love to lead, and I think I've always had a strong personality, um, but I think my love of leadership really blossomed when I was at Cape Henry. Um, growing up, I said a little bit earlier, I had a hard time engaging in church, and I think I was, I'm an introvert with extroverted qualities, um, and abilities, and so when I was attending youth growing up and trying to attend church, 
I just had such a hard time connecting with people and fitting in and being comfortable being myself. And uh, when I was at Cape Henry, it was a really incredible opportunity for me to, to own my faith and claim my faith as an adult. Um, and I was given leadership opportunity because I was in the leadership program. Um, to lead, I remember we had a, a youth retreat. And so I was chosen as one of the MCs of this youth retreat. And it was intimidating and scary, um, but it gave me really incredible opportunity to find my voice and see my passion for leadership. And, and as I've moved forward um, through church, through career, I really, I believe that every person has a voice and a purpose that is unique to them. And I think to honor God, we need to use that voice for that purpose, for his kingdom. Yeah, and I've seen uh, Christine step into leadership in various roles in our church uh, through Bible study and through leading some ministries. Uh, currently, you're a mentor mom in the Mom, in the Collect mom Collective. In yeah. the Mom Collective. Yeah. And then uh, somebody came to you about uh, seven years ago and said, hey, you should run for the school board. <laughs> yes, and I did. And yeah. so I do serve on Lethbridge School Division Board of Trustees, yeah. and I enjoy that. And and I think it's so important to... to um, use our voice and our influence to impact our community. Yeah, so yeah. that's something that I think people should know about you is that you're a strong, mm. capable leader. What about you? What do you think people should know about you? I think I love, I love this church. Mm. I really love this church. This is a church that I have really grown and developed in um, as a person. And I found, um, my calling and have been able to experience uh, my call and my purpose. I have met incredible community that has stretched me and that has loved me and that it's accepted me. Um, you know, growing up, growing up, I didn't have a church per se to be my community. And I think in my faith walk, my mom was my, my mom was an incredible um, example of walking in faith. Uh, she read her, I remember coming home from school and she'd be reading her Bible and listening to Christian radio. And so she was my integral example of living a life of faith. Um, and when I moved to Lethbridge in 1997, so I've been in this church for 25 years now, which is incredible. Um, I've been able to, to live that out myself and through different ministries being mentored and being able to mentor others, I've been able to see the goodness of God and um, just the growth that God guides me in. Yeah, I think the church mm -hmm. has given us both lots of opportunities to grow yeah. up here, which has been really yeah. cool. So. so what is one thing you think people should know about you? Um, I think it's about us, actually. I yeah. think that we're a great team, uh, that we get along really well together. We're we really good friends. Yeah. We're not perfect. There's definitely times that we're out of sync and out of rhythm with one another, but we have each other's backs. Yeah. We call yeah. each other on our stuff and our shortcomings. Uh, we cheer each other on mm -hmm. and we fill in for each other within our family roles when one of us is away. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's something that I really appreciate about Christine in particular is that when I need to be away for different opportunities or work, uh, Christine just jumps in and fills in. And I think it goes both ways. I would say it yeah. goes both ways. For but sure. I remember, yeah. I remember one of the first times I was away after, uh, or no, you were away. Yeah. And uh, we had, after we had moved back from Hamilton and uh, you got a text from someone telling you <laughs> that I had made it to church on time and that Lizzie's hair was even yep. brushed. It was done in pigtails. <laughs> I remember you got that text. You I were... know. And I remember saying to you, I never get texts like that, you know, or you don't get texts like that when I go. And anyways. Yeah, yeah I've fine. never received a text yeah. like that when Christine's been away <laughs> or when I've been away and yeah. Christine got the church, kids to church on time. Yeah. So there's lots more we could tell you about ourselves. I look forward to sharing some, of, some more of who I am and my vision for the church this Sunday. Uh, as we, as I preach my candidating sermon and in the next week through the Q&A opportunities and hopefully getting to know you more fully and you getting to know us more fully as we participate together in God's dream for the E-Free Church of Lethbridge. Jeremy will be preaching a candidating sermon this coming Sunday, January 15th, where he will share his call and his love for the people and work of our church. It has been encouraging and enlightening to the committee 
to hear Jeremy talk about the journey he has been on during his time at our church and the path that he believes God has created to lead him here today. We hope you feel the same excitement. There will be an opportunity to interact with Jeremy and pose any questions at our family gathering scheduled for Monday, January 16th and Thursday, January 19th at 7 in the sanctuary. An additional session will be held on Thursday, January 19th at 1.30 in the afternoon in the gym. Join us here at the church at one of these sessions next week to learn more. We trust this provides you with some insight into our process as we prepare to vote at a membership meeting on Monday, January 23rd at 7 p.m. in the sanctuary. The board welcomes questions and can be reached through board at efreelethbridge.ca. Please continue to pray with us as we seek God's guidance in this important matter.